Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today I have for you more Gibson nonsense, all right? I made a list. All right, first, I'd like to uh, address a couple of comments I got in my previous video, right? One of which is like, oh, your butt hurt because you can't afford it, so you gotta go talk bad about it. It's like, hello, who do you think I am? I'm Danny the Medic. I'm literally the person that Gibson's trying to sell to. You know, I'm old. I'm a professional. I enjoy guitars and I got the money, right? It's just that, you know, I'm not stupid. I look into things before I'm going to spend my money. What do you think? But anyway, let's begin. Okay, so what is a guitar? To me anyway, right? Now, I started my uh, electric guitar hobby later in life, okay? This is like a recent thing for me, right? Now, you're going to have to know that electric guitar solid body stuff is a piece of wood. Okay, it's a piece of wood, right, with metal bits on it, springs, magnets, etc., etc. All right, that's what it physically is based on reality. Okay, now I have learned that Gibson, right, their uh, Les Paul guitars and stuff, you know, and their electric line, you know, had always been expensive. I was shocked. Okay, now you know, I have learned this because. Like I say, I'll say again, I'm a consumer with the money, professional, I'm older, you know, I'm reliving my past, all the stereotypes that, you know, of the people who would buy a Gibson, I'm it, okay? So through my research, I found out that Gibson guitars, they were asking for like a hundred bucks back in like the 50s, okay? 150 bucks, whatever the case may be, 1952, 1955, yada, 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 right? With inflation, that's a lot of money. Woo, that's a lot of money, guys. So Gibson's products has always been expensive, right? But we gotta take a further look into the past, right? Why were they expensive? Okay, well, you know, the conclusion I came to is because back then, you know, they were handcrafted, right? Now I'm thinking that the, uh, the money they wanted for a Les Paul standard back then is like around the same as the money they would like, want for a Les Paul standard in Germany, like about like 1900, 1800 bucks, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, it's pretty close, right? not bad. But back then it was handmade, right? Because let's think about it. No, I haven't researched their manufacturing processes in 1952 or whatever the heck, right? I can't. I looked online and didn't find anything. But I do know this. A long time ago, there were no such things as computers and robots. Now, we got computers and robots and the likes of Harley Benton guitars made by computers and robots, okay? Now, back then, I, and, uh, I, I mean, I looked up the, uh, the invention of the CNC machine. They said it's like the early 50s. And, and then to make it work, they got to feed in like punched cards of paper. So I, I don't think like Gibson would have done that. They would have just had stuck to their regular manufacturing by people's hands and like machines that are not computerized and, you know, chisels and stuff. Now, that's what I think. Kind of like maybe what the custom shop is doing nowadays. What I'm guessing over here, right? Because I hear custom shop. I hear 5,000, I hear 8,000, I hear 10,000, you know, it better be, you know, handmade. Now, the inflation uh, factored in, you know, it's not like the $200 from 1950 is like six, eight, ten grand of today's money. No, it, that is just way overpriced, guys, right? Now, if they were doing that in the past, and then the custom shop is the equivalent, then the custom shop should be like $22,000 a piece with the regular factory stuff, with the computers and the automation and everything, should be in the five dollars $600 range, right? So Gibson nowadays is actually extremely overpriced for what it is, okay? Now, I like to uh, talk about the competition of Gibson, 
all right so i've read i i, I dove deep in this one guys because you know i i'm a you know i'm a consumer that is also kind of skeptical you know uh, there's a lot of scams out there so you know I, I keep an eye out you know when i spend my money okay and i have the money to spend that's why i, I started all this you know because i you know all this like oh he's just hating i'm not hating i honestly did look into i wanted to buy something nice guys because look i'm gonna die one day all right i'm i'm old right you know i was like hey there are things in life that when i was younger i was more like conservative about you know but now i'm now at my age i'm like dude i'm gonna die all right i'm gonna die okay you young people you're probably not gonna die anytime soon but i'm close to death you can't take it with you you know so if there is some kind of superior guitar that is like so good and worshipped by millions you know like i want one you know but again i'm not stupid i look into things okay so the patent of Gibson filed by Theodore McCarty, right? He's the inventor of the Les Paul, not Les Paul. Les Paul was some guy they paid off to put the name on the guitar because he was like a really, really, he was like maybe like the slash of back then, you know what I mean? He was so popular, him and that, that wife of his, that I think the wife was a better player, you know? But back then, it's kind of like, like a, you know, like men's time, like they don't want women to be that great. So I've seen like old footage of Les Paul, you know, like holding her back. That's not right, guys, right? I believe in equality between men and women. You know, if you can do it good, do it good. You know what I mean? None of that bullshit. All right. So what was I saying? Yeah. So the patent expired in 20 years after the time of filing or whatever the heck it was, right? And then that would be like 50, 60 in the 70s, okay? So now, you know, you heard about the 70s lawsuit guitars, right? I guess after the patent expired, everybody and the, and the grandmothers decided to make their versions of the Les Paul guitar. Like uh, in Japan, they got like, what was that? Ibanez. They make such like convincing ones. I was like, I only saw pictures, guys. I was like, whoa, okay? And of course, Gibson didn't like that. So they got to whip out other things they can sue people about. Uh, trade dress and and shit like that. I don't even know what that shit is. Horrible guys, right? Like, look, your patent expired, all right? Every, give everyone else a chance to make that stuff. But no, they have to go suing, right? Like, oh, you know, it looks too close to, you know, I think the last thing I heard about is that you try to uh, sue PRS over the silhouette of the guitar. Something about the outline of it. The outline? Because it's like their logo or something. It's an outline, really. If you have to try that hard to stop people from making it, your stuff ain't that special. I'm telling you. All right. So, everyone started making it. And obviously, the 70s, they have computers and they have robots. You know, manufacturing you know, on a mass scale has become easier. So, I'm pretty sure all those other things were like costing much less, you know. Now... Back when I was in college, I took a business class, uh, marketing or something, economics, or something like that. And uh, Gibson Guitars was actually a topic of discussion, right? It was, uh, you know, we learned that, like, Gibson uh, eventually, uh, since they had their popular period, then it declined in popularity due to the competition. And then so Gibson decided to make things more efficient and lo start lowering their prices to compete. But the cheaper they went, the people just didn't want to buy it, right? So then they realized that, hey, you know, if they jack up the price, people want it. And that's true for a lot of stuff, you know? Like, what makes things interesting is like, no matter how crappy your product is, you make it a really high price, you know, in any kind of product. It will draw attention and there'll be people who will buy it. Nonsense, guys. Like, uh, in the watch world, there is a... Like, I don't know, like a $500,000 watch. Uh, I don't know, Richard DeMille or something like that. It is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But I think they sold one or two, you know. And after they sell one or two, you know, you know, other rich people were like, Ooh, what's that? I want one too. You know, like they got money to burn, you know. Ridiculous. All right. So, let's talk about... 
like uh, the myth behind Gibson and uh, and the nitro finish that is inferior. Okay, now I I wrote it down over here. The only reason Gibson used nitro finishes in their original guitars, the 50s and 60s and stuff like that, is because that's all they had back then. There were nothing else, okay? People used nitro finishes on the cabinets and furniture, even on cars. But it is what they had back then, all right? It does, it's not better in any way, okay? Nowadays, the finishes are better. The today's science make finishes far superior than that nitrocellulose nonsense. That's why all the other people stopped using it and switched over to something better, you know? But, you know, Gibson, they have to stick to that. And, uh, you know, because of what they're trying to do, which I will explain. Now, other guitar manufacturers, uh, you know, are kind of falling into that, that, that trap, you know? Because too many people believe that natural cellulose that got magical properties, and they start making guitars with that ridiculous finish. And then it's like, dude, what are you doing, you know? If, you know, but there's enough people out there who are brainwashed that will, you know, buy that. And say, oh, they're gonna equate natural cellulose with expensive, uh, and expensive gotta be better, and therefore they're gonna go and, you know, but it's ridiculous, guys, come on. It's like you put the, a natural cellulose guitar in a, in a hanger, that's gonna mar your finish. Are you kidding me? You can't even use guitar accessories around that stuff. You gotta wrap it in cotton and stuff. What kind of finish is that nonsense, baloney nonsense? Hello, wake up people. Anyway, I continue, I continue. All right, so because Gibson used natural cellulose back then, and back then there weren't actually, I mean, they invented the guitar like, you know, they invented their guitar, Leo Fender invented his guitar, like the electrics, it was in the early stages, right? So the people who use electric use one of those, all right? And of course, nowadays, right, a lot of people, they, they can't use logical, critical thinking, right? They walk down the, uh, the hall of fame, right? They're going to walk down, they're going to be like, oh my God, look at this so-and-so guy. He's the guy that wrote that song and sang that song. Oh, he's fantastic. He's, oh, I love millions of people love his music. Oh, what guitar is he using? Oh, look, there it is, a Gibson with a nitro finish. Okay, then they move on to the next picture. Oh my God, this guy. Oh, I love him to death. He's so good. He's classic. My God, so popular. What guitar is this? <gasps> it's a Gibson with nitro cellulose, right? And they go down the line, picture after picture, artist after artist from the past. You know, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, what do they, all these people have in common? You know, the Gibson guitar with the nitro finish. Well, obviously, I'm talking like, like a Gibson-themed Hall of Fame, right? Obviously, they're going to be like, you know, like a Strats and stuff you know, in the actual, like, uh, a mixed Hall of Fame, but you know what I mean, right? So you got all these wonderful, well-known artists all using Gibson, and therefore, you must buy Gibson because obviously, Gibson's the best, right? Gibson's the best. Hey, it costs you an arm and a leg. Only the best stuff in the world costs you that much money, right? And of course, all these, the gods of music, uses it therefore it's the best way right? think about it all right that's what, just what they have back then right do you have any idea of how many crappy failed musicians that also use the same guitar because that's also what they had back then you just haven't heard of these people because they sucked all right hey they sucked no one liked their music they died no one cared all right and I, and look how, you can only count like within like you know, with all the fingers and toes you got, how many uh, these gods exist? And you think about it, how many guitars they sold, right? Back then, how many doctors and lawyers were there to buy that stuff? Not a lot, all right? So all these failed musicians use the same thing. Oh, nitro cellulose give you that great god-like tone? Well, why didn't nitro cellulose help all those failed musicians with their careers? They didn't go anywhere. They just don't even know their names, you know? So no, natural cellulose isn't something magical that make it all good. It isn't Gibson, the brand, you know, that makes it all good. 
got all those failed people now in graves and stuff. They also used Gibson. What made the great tone and the great music was the players, guys. The players made them. They were skilled. They were magnificent. It is them that was special, okay? Not the guitar, not the finish. Think about it. If it was the guitar, then we're going to have like thousands of people who are guitar gods out there. Because if it was the guitar, wake up, come on. $2,800 for Les Paul standard just because of that you know people get brainwashed you know and Gibson yeah there have been comments right well Gibson is a business they gotta look out for themselves well they do well I'm a consumer I'm looking out for the consumers out there I'm telling you it's a whole quack of baloney they're selling you baloney guys history and heritage how about the history and heritage of all those failed musicians that got nowhere what about their history they use Gibson's of Nitro Give me a friggin' break. God, people, you know, they fall for marketing all the time. All right, now let's talk about PRS very expensive guitars and Gibson very expensive guitars, all right? Now, that's why I'm starting to look into PRS, guys, because, hey, I got the money, I'm getting old, I want a really great guitar, and I'm not going to stop looking into it until I get one or two or three, all right? I'm old, I'm dying soon, all right? Give me a break. I'm trying to like, you know, do some real research here so people can spend the money wisely. All right. POS guitars. SE. I got a couple of those. Wonderful. Made in Indonesia, guys. Wow. I want to visit Indonesia one day. But here's a, a little side thing I want to talk to you about. The people in Indonesia, there's a specific people that have a very strange way of honoring their ancestors. Guys. They dig up their dead ancestors and do things with them. They brush them off, like, right out of the graves. Like, the, the children poses for pictures with them. Like, oh, this is great, great, great grandpa. Hey, all right. You know, like, you know, wipe the glasses, put it back on the corpse's face. Dude, I kind of want to see that too. All right? I'm a freak. Yes, I am. Right? I want to go to Indonesia one day. It is, it's going to be a fun trip. One day, guys, one day. All right, so I looked in the PRS. They got the SE, fine. They got some bolt-on stuff. All right, fine. Then they have the S2, which is like they make because uh, not too many people can afford or want to pay that much for their core offering, right? So it's basically uh, another factory that they make next to the core factory or something like that. And then they just have like a cheaper way of making them, like multiple pieces of wood and things like that. All right. Then they got 10 tops, right? Where they select the woods that is like looking really nice. And you know, the money's going up, guys. Really expensive stuff, right? That they, you know, save the wood. They, they get a shipment of wood, right? It costs them the same amount of money for the entire shipment, but they look through it. And then they, they, they look at it, oh, this piece is really nice, put it on that side. This piece is kind of okay, put it on the regular side. So they got these whole like 10 top things where they select it and sort it out. Now, I don't think this should be more expensive because, you know, the shipment of wood costs them the same, but eh, whatever, right? Then they got the wood library, like custom stuff. You go in there, you select from all these different kinds, you, you know, guitars made to your spe specifications, like, oh, whatever your dreams may be, they'll make it for you, for people who want to spend that kind of money. Now, yeah, that's PRS's expensive stuff. Gibson's expensive stuff. Guys, right? It's like, they're selling you baloney, right? They sell you the same guitar, but, you know, the more you pay, this guy named Murphy, he just beats it up for you. So the higher the price, I mean, like, the more he beats it up, and, and you know, the higher it costs. There was one for $10,000, all beat up. It's like, wait a second. So PRS, they're making guitars, and when you pay that price, they bring you excellence and, like, the exotic woods and everything. And Gibson, they sell you stuff that some guy beats up. Think about that one, guys. Well, and that's it for today. Have a good one. Put your comments below.